What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. And in this video, we're going to discuss a few topics that I think are really important right now. Those topics are going to include PvP, updates to the game that were announced in the most recent article, and also some upcoming videos that you can expect this week. So it's been a little while since we did a discussion video, and I figured this was a really good time to do one. In the background, we're going to run some pretty recent PvP footage, and at least this first fight is going to illustrate something that we're going to talk about. So, PvP. Where are we currently? Well, personally, I've been over 2400 rating multiple times this season. I really shouldn't have any problems getting Spider Girl, which kind of crosses over into the realm of videos for this week. We'll definitely have one of PvP Season 23's ending and all the rewards. I believe we're about 26 hours or so away. Like I said before, my defensive wins have really carried me, and the fact that I had more defensive wins than offensive was really odd to say the least. I believe it has to do with many fights coming down to turn order and random procs, and I'm not the only one who thinks that. Now I know some of you may be thinking then, what makes this different from the past? And yes, you're right, random procs have played a role in PvP for a very long time. Turn order as well. But this season, it really does feel kicked up a notch. If Enchantress goes first, for example, it's almost always a loss for me. When she goes first, regardless of the skeptic, she locks out someone with Charmed. And I'm talking they'll get Charmed every single round. Your teammates will hit each other every single time. And I know satellite support, but we only have so many options. Because this is actually only part of the problem this season. But anyway, she'll dot someone up, she almost always gets bleeds. And then Thorns makes her even worse. The crazy thing though is I've beaten hundreds of Enchantress and Pestilence Beast teams. But like I said, when she doesn't go first, it's like a completely different match. I don't know if that's like an AI script, but it does work out differently when she goes first. And maybe I'm not even thinking clearly because I just lost one of those teams and she went first. But it is something that I've noticed. What's really compounded the issues this season is that's not even the only team that gets a ton of procs or never ending turns and has made this tournament less than enjoyable. The mandible procs every single action. If you rest, you get hit. So when you put it with a team that has Spider-Man Noir, Rocket Raccoon, etc. You might as well just sit back and enjoy the show. Then we have ranged and now melee attacks getting interrupted over and over again. Luckily we have a Hulk. But still I personally like to use all sorts of heroes. And I guess that's the most frustrating thing about it. The main reason I even have an issue. For the haves and the have nots. The characters that are overpowered. The gap seems wider than ever. You can't even experiment anymore. For example, watch a full health Hyperion just attack Red Hulk. Game over, 100% damage from Absorb Energy alone. That's a bit much, don't you think? Now for me, I found a team that works pretty well in the meta, and it's Nurkod and Iron Fist. Before that, offensive attacks were way more annoying than defensive, and that's why I was concentrating on my defensive team basically riding their coattails all the way to adamantium. It's just a strange upside down season, and I hope things get better. Relying on random procs in turn order just isn't fun. That's why regardless of what rating I get to, or how easily I get there, through defensive means let's say, I still think it's the worst season yet, and that's saying a lot. But on a brighter note, moving on to the most recent article about the upcoming updates, I'll post a link in the description below. But basically they're talking about the upcoming Spider-Verse Spec Op. Well, that's just part of it. There's some other huge updates as well. So first, the Spider-related news. Silk is going to be the next reward hero for Spider-Verse Spec Op Part 2. And May, Mayday Parker will go for general release. Then on top of that, they said Ben Riley's Spider-Man costume will be released to Spider-Woman, aka May, Mayday Parker as a uniform, but I'm not sure when we can expect that. By the way, they also said the Infiltrator mech armor is being tested, and so hopefully it'll be fixed soon. But for the really big news, at least what I would call the big news, 
They're talking about another equipment slot for our agent. So it looks like a fifth slot will come pretty soon. As well as new and improved gear that can be won on daily mission rewards. But as far as a fifth slot, I'm both worried and excited about it. Worried about it because I think change just worries me in general. But I am excited that we can use yet another piece of equipment. And that definitely opens up a lot of possibilities. With that I could probably use full equipment sets. And the synthetic cube. Or have that satellite support that I couldn't find room for before. The possibilities are endless but with that. Of course there's going to be many many broken combos. And that's another thing to worry about. But mainly for now I'm just worried about the cost. How much is this going to cost us? Or will it be through some sort of covert task? That remains to be seen. I think the speculation is it's going to cost gold. And that could provide a larger gap between the haves and have nots. Also you have to worry about overwhelming new agents. Who are absolutely essential to this game. So hopefully they keep all that in mind. And lastly I would say the most exciting and nothing bad about it news. The remaining worthy are apparently Thundra, Damon Hellstrom, and Black Knight. They were kind of asked that question to confirm it, and the answer given was, quote, There are indeed three more Season 2 chapters, and yes, Black Knight, Damon Hellstrom, and Thundra have been confirmed as missing. So yeah, I can't wait for all three of those characters and their worthy costumes. Can you imagine how amazing Black Knight's going to be? He's already awesome. Speaking of him, I promised a video about him a long time ago. And I've been trying to get his AI so ever since. I still haven't won it. So that's why that one's delayed. But this week we're going to have an AOU Twins All Hell the King episode. So if you want to see more of Age of Ultron Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, make sure to check that one out. We're going to have another look at Spider-Gwen and in PvP. And my opinions on her have changed slightly, but she's still underwhelming. We'll of course have a Season 23 wrap up video and hopefully show Spider-Girl in action. Other than that we're going to have a special Worthy video featuring of course Nurkod and some of the other Worthy. I'm probably going to try to squeeze them all in there actually. And lastly I'm probably going to do the best of Age of Ultron costume team ups or at least my favorite so far. If let's say I try to cover every costume it's going to be a multi-part video. So let me know if you'd want to see that. Of course some Age of Ultron ults are much better than others. Some just didn't come out that great. As much as it pains me to say it. I'm looking at you Captain America. But anyways that's pretty much going to be it. But that's just this week. Also if there's a new spec ops you know I'll cover that. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. Please leave a like and comment. Then until next time, good luck and take care.